Hi there everybody, Christy Nickel for Lean You, teaching you all about lean and helping you implement it within your business. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to identify your value streams. How many do you have and what products belong to each one? Super, super important step to do before you create a current state value stream map or even before you get your leadership team together and head out onto your work floor to walk your value stream. Really important because it's going to help you manage the scope of what you're looking at and really going to clarify what data to collect and what products do you follow. So you don't want to get confused when you're out there and, and suddenly you know, inventory do we count and what are we following because that's going that way and that's going that way. So really important first step that's going to prevent all of that confusion when you're out on the floor. So there's two main ways of identifying your value streams. The first is to create a product family matrix and the second is to use a spaghetti diagram. So I'll show you both. To create a product family matrix, we first list all of the products that we sell down a column of a matrix and across the top we're going to list all of the main processing steps or machinery. Then for each product we're just going to identify which steps they go through and then we're going to group them according to which products go through similar processing steps or use the same machinery. So let's say I am the owner of Pickwick Tools that manufactures awesome screwdrivers with the replaceable bits and I wanted to create our product family matrix. So first of all, I'd want to make sure I have the right people in the room. We want to make sure there's strong operational knowledge there. You don't want to guess, but what processing steps all of your products go through. And then I'm going to ask someone to bring a list of all the products that we sell because you don't want to forget any and just go off, off, our, off our memory. So as a group, I'm at the front of the room, my team is in front of me, and I say, okay, what's the first product on our list? And they would say, the Dash 7. It's like, all right then, the Dash 7 is the first product that we're going to look at. So I'll put that up on our matrix. Okay, and then I ask, what is the first process that the Dash 7 goes through? And the team says, handle print. It has to get, get the, our logo printed on the handle. Great. So I put that across the top as the first process. What's the next process? Well, it has to go through assembly. Great. So I put that across the top. And the next step. Well, it has to have the seventh bit loaded. So it has to go to that piece of machinery. Excellent. So I'll put that process. And what's the next process it has to go through? It has to go to blister packaging. Okay, so I put that up there as well. And the next step, be going to bulk display. Okay, so I'll put that up there as well. And then we use X's to show that the dash seven goes through all of these processing steps. Okay, all the way across. Almost need a little bit of music in here for you. <laughs> okay, so there we go. So we're done for that one product. Now what's the next product on our list? The Teeny Turner. Okay, so I'll put that down the column. This is for our next product, the Teeny Turner. So, does the Teeny Turner also go through handle print? Yes, it does. Excellent. So I'll put an X under that one. Does the Teeny Turner go through assembly? It's like, well, it does go through assembly, but not this same assembly area. It's a totally different piece of equipment on the other side of the facility. Okay, then. So we're going to want to add another process identifying that. Okay, so I'll squeeze it in here. Because we also want to keep it in sequence as much as we can. Okay, so assembly two, we'll call that one, and we'll put an X under that process. After assembly two, does it go to seventh bit loading? No, it doesn't need to go there. Does it go to blister packaging? Well, it does go through blister packaging, but not this same area. It goes to a totally different work center. Okay, then we're going to want to put in another process then. Once again, trying to keep it in sequence. So I'll squeeze that on in there and identify that the teeny turner goes through that process. Okay, and then how about bulk display? Once again, it does go through bulk display, but a different area 
than the one that the dash 7 goes through. So we'll make another process and add it to the end. Okay, and then we'll identify that the teeny turner goes through that one. Okay, and lastly, we're going to look at our six pack plus screwdriver. So I'll put that down here. And once again, the same questions. Does it go through handle print? Yes, it does. Okay. Does it go through assembly? Yes, it does. So which one does it go through? The assembly for the dash seven or the assembly area for the teeny turner? This area for the dash seven. So we'll put the X under that process. Does it go through seventh bit loading? Yes, it does. Okay. Does it go through blister packaging? Yes, it does. It goes through the same work, work area as the dash seven. So we'll put the X under that corresponding process. And does it go through bulk display? Yes. Once again, the same bulk display area as the dash seven. Okay. And that's how you do a product family matrix for all of your products. So you may have 10 products. You may have three, you may have 60. Okay. But for each one, what processing steps or pieces of equipment does it go through? And then trying to keep it once again in sequence. So when you're all done with that, then you start trying to regroup your products according to what similar processing steps or machinery that they use. So when you look here, it's pretty obvious that the Dash 7 and the 6 Pack Plus both go through the exact same processing steps. So they would be part of the same value stream. So I would literally take this row out and move it to be directly underneath the 6 Pack Plus. Okay, so we're just showing that they're grouping together, okay, all the way across. Okay, and there you have it. So in this particular example, we know the Teeny Turner is a value stream all on its own. And these two products, the Six Pack Plus and the Dash 7, create another value stream. Okay, so if we were mapping this value stream, we would count the inventories for these two products. We would follow the sequence of the processing steps for both of these products. And when we create a future state, we're going to create a future state for, for both of these products. Now, you could have value streams that have 10, 20 items in there. You can have value streams with one item in there, right? It's, it's all dependent on, on your processes and how many products that you have. Okay, so that's how you create a product family matrix. Now, if you're a customs manufacturer, a lot of people say it doesn't apply to me. Yes, it does. Now, you could be a customs manufacturer where everything you make goes through the same steps, but they're all different, right? I worked with a company that did custom water park pieces. So they all, they were all big, big metal, metal pieces, um, it's all in different shapes. Some animals, some, some people playing the instruments, they all went through the exact same processing steps in terms of being cut to shape, being welded, polished, sandblasted, powder coat, quality assurance. All of them went through those exact same processing steps, but every piece was different. That's one value stream. They listed all of their different items and they all went through the exact same steps. Right? So you have one big value stream for everything that you make, right? And there's tools later on when you're creating your future state that are going to help you still apply the tools within that scenario. You may also be a custom manufacturer that every product you make goes through different processes in a totally different sequence. And if that's the case, that means every product you make is its own value stream. Okay? And so when you're giving a quote for a custom item, you can already start thinking about, okay, how are we going to make this? What equipment are we going to need? What sequence are we going to put it in? Where are we going to locate it? Because every single one is its own value stream. So regardless of what you make, whether it's high volume, low variety, or low volume, high variety, it's applicable, right? Take the time to look at it and figure out how many value streams you have and what products are part of each one. Okay, so now in this particular example, I used post-it notes because I only had three, three um, final products to look at. In many situations, 
Um, if you've got 60 products, 70 products, this is going to be a cumbersome exercise to do with post-its. So another thing you can do is put it straight into an Excel spreadsheet. Super easy then to insult, insult, insert columns where you need to, and then really easy to just cut your rows and move them around to see what products are going through similar processing steps. One thing I did forget to mention, they don't have to go through exactly the same processing steps. Good rule of thumb, have them go through 80% or more. So even if, say for example, the Dash 7 didn't go through that particular step, these two still go through 80% or more of the same processing steps, so that's okay that would still be considered one value stream. Okay? Now, the second option to creating, or pardon me, identifying your value streams is, as I mentioned, creating a spaghetti diagram. And this entails getting a floor plan of your facility, and if you don't have one on a computer, you can just hand, hand bomb it, just do, do an informal drawing, making sure you're identifying all of your main processes and all your main equipment, put it down on a big table, Get your team around it and select one color marker for each product that you make and just say where does it start, what process step does it go to in what sequence and do that for every product using a different colored marker and you're going to be able to see which products go through the similar processing steps in the same sequence. Okay, so for example, if I were to do that for this same company, okay, just put that up there. And let's just say green is the dash seven. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you identify that because you're gonna be done your spaghetti diagram and you won't remember what products are which. So the dash seven starts at the handprint. It goes over to assembly, to the seventh bit loader, to the blister, to the bulk, and then out the door to the finished goods. Okay, so that was the dash seven. If I use pink for the six pack, six pack plus, okay, well, it's the same thing. Starts at the handle print, goes to assembly one, to the seventh bit, to the blister, to bulk, and out, okay? And lastly, I'm gonna look at the teeny turner. I'm gonna use blue. And it starts at the handle print as well, but it goes over to this area for assembly, and then to this blister packaging, to bulk, and then to the finished goods. So you can see pretty quickly what products go through the same processes in the same sequence and which ones take their own little path. Okay, so just keep track of them. And another simple way of identifying how many value streams you have and what products belong to each. So there you have it, two really simple ways to figure out what your value streams are. And once you've identified them as a team, you can focus and prioritize on one of them. And that's where you're gonna go walk your value stream, create your value, st your value stream maps, all that good stuff. So hopefully that helps. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns and we'll talk to you soon.